Goedendag en alvast een zalig kerstfeest gewenst. In de loop van de avond wordt het dan toch een beetje rustiger. De laatste buien verlaten ons land en trekken richting Duitsland. De rest van de nacht verloopt droog met minima tussen 2 en 7 graden. Morgen in de vroege ochtend is het misschien nog eventjes droog, maar het duurt niet lang voordat die buiencarousel weer op gang komt. Vanuit het noorden denderen die buien over ons land met regen, met reukwinden van een 70, 80 km per uur, met hagel en Onweer. Er zijn nog een paar opklaringen, maar het is toch wel nadrukkelijk bewolkt. En daarbij halen we temperaturen van zo'n 8, 9 graden. Und das ist auch heute der Fall gewesen. Hier eine weitere Superzelle aufgenommen von Benedikt Schmidt bei Ingolstadt. Und auch im Main-Taunus-Kreis ging es wild zu und her, was Sie hier sehen. Der starke Regen. Teilweise sind 100 und mehr Liter auf den Quadratmeter innerhalb weniger Stunden gefallen. Knietiefes Wasser, die Autos kommen kaum durch. Und natürlich ist dann auch die Kanalisation vollkommen überfordert. Und wenn wir mal auf den Radarfilm schauen, dann sehen Sie hier von Westen in verschiedenen Staffeln kommen die Unwetter reingezogen, gerade auch hier über Sachsen-Anhalt jetzt ein Schwergewitter weiter unterwegs nach Osten und das wird uns in der Nacht beschäftigen, gerade in der Osthälfte, dort kommt die Front dann an, drum auch gerade für Berlin, für Brandenburg, für Sachsen-Anhalt bestehende Tornado-Warnung, die Temperatur sinkt hier teilweise auf nur 22, 23 Grad, es ist eine Tropennacht, im Westen, da lockert es dann auf, die Werte dann um 17 Grad. Now, these are warnings that would be given up by the South African Weather Service. Now, you'll see that there's possibilities of heavy rainfall that I just showed you in just a second. And then, again, hot and dry conditions there could also lead to failed fires, could lead to crops also being damaged. Along the northeastern parts, again, possibilities of rainfall. And you'll see, when you look at the northeastern parts, again, the severe rainfall that we should expect there, and these could lead to lots and lots of flooding of tourist areas, lots of economic loss along the Limpopo regions, as well as over some parts of Mozambique. If you look at the Mozambique, big channels, the low pressure cells that are expected there, those could lead to heavy rainfalls. Si Rubina, ang pinakamalakas na bagyo na maglalandfall sa bansa ngayong 2050 at ang pinakamalakas na rin para sa Mindanao sa loob ng limang taon. Yan na muna ang latest tungkol kay Typhoon Rubin mula sa Action Weather Center. Ako po si Leah Cruz. The weather report you've just seen is set in 2050 and it's just a possibility given the direction that the world is taking now things may actually turn out to be much worse. The Philippines is a nation made up of 7,107 islands with around 36,000 kilometers of shoreline. We are also the third most disaster-prone country in the world, and we experience an average of 20 storms every year, 90% of which affect the country. Now, as Miami deals with flooding, Chicago is feeling the heat. Ironically, this is the first full day of fall, and this is day five of triple-digit temperatures. This late-season heat wave puts us on pace for the hottest September on record. If it verifies, it will be the third warmest September in the past 12 years. So let's take a look at the forecast temperatures for today. At Navy Pier, 96 degrees, just a short walk to Michigan Avenue, and the temperature jumps to 99. Willis Tower will top out at 101, and Wrigley Field, 99 degrees. The heat is a huge factor in tonight's Cubs game against Canada's Alberta Clippers. Edmonton, like many northern cities, is one of the fastest growing right now, due in part to the pleasantly mild fall temperatures in the upper 60s. Dry and hot air coming from the Karahari Desert has continued advancing into Zambia and drying much of the southwestern parts of the country, limiting the intertropical convergence zone to the northern parts of the country. And the forecast for this morning, sunny weather conditions over the southwestern parts is expected with temperatures ranging from 11 to 12 degrees Celsius elsewhere. It will be partly cloudy with the temperatures ranging from 17 over Sulawesi to 24 degrees Celsius over Chipata. お日が日になっても厳しい暑さが収まりません。仙台では 30度。名古屋は 36度。東京は35度まで気温が上がりました。東京は8月に40度8分を記録しましたが、これまでの真夏日日数は連続して50日以上に達しています。熱中症など暑
断続的ではありますが１０月の上旬まで続くとみられます。Nous avons observé dans la zone sahélienne autour de 500 mm d'eau, dans la zone soudano-sahélienne autour de 800 mm d'eau et dans la zone soudanienne autour de 1000 mm d'eau tombée. Ce qui veut dire qu'autour des années 2050, ces phénomènes extrêmes vont toujours se maintenir, fortes précipitations et probabilité de sécheresse également. Komið sæl, við lítum hér örstutt á veðurhorfur til morguns en það stefnir í suðvestlega eða vestlega átt með rigningu um allt land, verður þó súld hér um vestanverðan hlutan og gæti stytt upp um tíma hér fyrir norð, austan og jafnvel sést til sólar en þó verður rigning megin hlutan að deginum þar. Þrátt fyrir vætu til þá stefnir í skaplegasta veður hægan vind og þó nokkuð hlýtt víðast hvar og gæti gæti hitinn farið víða hér fyrir austan og norðaustan yfir 20 stegin. Það stefnir þó ekki að nýtt landsitamett sem sett var í síðustu viku, 32,2 stig í húsafelli, að það verði slegið núna í bráð. And according to the climate change, we are going to experience difficult, different impacts, including malaria, which is going to be the biggest problem for the entire country. Food insecurity for both for humans and livestock, as well we are going to have food shortage. This is going to be a problem for both people over the urban areas and the rural areas. Otherwise, other sectors like energy and tourism will be affected. As you can see, example of Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the beautiful mountain in Africa with the beautiful ice cap on top of it, is going to deplete, and the greener part around it is going to completely be washed away. And the animal, the wildlife, you can see are in the Desperate condition as they are looking for food and the, for water. На връх Рожен и днес максималната температура ще достига 36 градуса. Звучи ви невероятно, но дори и фантастичните прогнози вече се превръщат в реалност. Катастрофални наводнения в България и Сърбия. Пагубна градушка в Западна България. 20 градуса през януари у нас. Опустошителни торнада в Северна Америка. Невиждани студове отвъд Атлантика. Какво става с времето? So I expect this morning that we have quite sunny weather in Denmark. Temperature is about 20 degrees, so it feels very warm and of course also humid. But during the forenoon and especially in the afternoon, I expect uh, thunderstorms developing over northern Germany. And from there, it will move to the southern part of Denmark. These thunderstorms may be quite heavy and giving a uh, risk of uh, flooding in uh, main cities, of course. So citizens are advised to take care of property and basements. And also look out for thunder clouds and look out also for small tornadoes, which may be a risk in these heavy thunderstorms. The temperature is expected to rise to about 35 degrees. Olá, bom dia! Segue chovendo muito na região sul do Brasil e no oeste da Amazônia neste 8 de junho de 2050. Nuvens carregadas devem provocar temporais com ventos fortes hoje à tarde nessas regiões. O motivo para toda essa chuva é o transporte de um ar quente e úmido em direção a essas áreas. Em poucos dias, o acumulado de chuva deve ultrapassar a média esperada para todo mês, o que aumenta o risco de alagamentos e também de enxurradas. Já no nordeste do país e no leste da Amazônia, o cenário é completamente diferente. O tempo fica seco, sem possibilidade de chuva. A seca já dura meses em algumas regiões. E teremos mais um dia quente no Brasil hoje. Faz calor de mais de 30 graus em boa parte do país, apesar de já estarmos perto do inverno. 
On this steamy September night in 2050, shower and thunderstorm activity is offshore here on our live first alert Doppler radar. And of course, way offshore, we have Hurricane Kyle. And now Kyle is expected to miss South Florida, thankfully, as it heads offshore the Bahamas and further north across the waters of the Atlantic, offshore the Carolinas, as a matter of fact, as it loses strength and eventually is expected to move on towards the northeast and become just a remnant tropical storm. So for us, no direct impact. But folks, this time, uh, these days, as you know, we tend to have big time problems with the flooding, no matter how far away this hurricane is offshore. There you see Kyle with its well-defined eye north of the Bahamas. Uh, you see some of the shower and thunderstorm activity that affected us away from Kyle today. But even though the core of the system is going to remain this far offshore, here's our problem. We have the onshore winds produced by the distant hurricane and just the onshore winds is sufficient to produce, well, the flooding that we're seeing, the tidal flood along Miami Beach, again, submerging a good portion of the city, three, four feet of water once more as we have this distant hurricane producing uh, these conditions. Of course, exacerbated by climate change and sea level rise that we're seeing already mid-century here. And this is, of course, expected to worsen. août 2050. Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir. Bienvenue à ces prévisions météorologiques. En manchette ce soir, les derniers habitants quittent les îles de la Madeleine après des décennies de hausse du niveau de la mer, mais surtout une recrudescence de tempête. L'érosion est tellement importante que les nappes phréatiques sont maintenant attaquées. Personne ne peut vivre maintenant du côté des îles de la Madeleine. Également en manchette, le saumon Sakai qui peuplait la côte ouest de la Colombie-Britannique. Maintenant, avec la montée des eaux et la hausse des températures de l'eau à migrer, on retrouve maintenant le saumon Sakai seulement du côté de l'Asie. Ce qui va se passer pour le Canada au courant de la journée de demain, on a encore une dépression avec beaucoup, beaucoup de vent qui va amener de la pluie et possiblement des inondations côtières du côté de la Colombie-Britannique. Toujours cet anticyclone bien campé sur les prairies, situation de canicule et de sécheresse. Les vents dominants du nord qui prennent la fumée des feux de forêt et précipitent ça sur le sud de l'Ontario. Que nous dit la masse d'air Eh bien que nous ne sommes pas les seuls, figurez-vous, en France à subir cette canicule. Regardez cette masse d'air extrêmement chaud qui englobe toute l'Europe et où se trouve l'air plus frais dont je vous parlais Ici, à l'arrière de la perturbation. Donc il n'est pas encore là et demain matin, les températures seront déjà très élevées, notamment à Paris, à Perpignan ou à Nice avec 26 degrés et dans l'après-midi, on atteindra ou dépassera encore les 40 degrés, 41 à Agen, 41 à Strasbourg, 40 dans les capitales, 42 pour Lyon et jusqu'à 43 degrés prévus à Nice. Se prevén intensas lluvias durante el transcurso de los próximos cinco días en la selva central y sur del país, especialmente en la selva alta del Cusco, por lo que el gobierno ha decretado el primer cierre temporal del acceso a la ciudadela de Machu Picchu de esta temporada. Un panorama opuesto presenta la vertiente occidental de la cordillera en la sierra sur del país, debido a la ausencia de lluvias, poniendo en riesgo la disponibilidad de agua en esta región. Mientras que Tumbes y Piura vienen registrando lluvias muy intensas como consecuencia del actual fenómeno del Niño y donde las temperaturas ya vienen superando los 38 grados Celsius. Las proyecciones indican que este fenómeno, el Niño, sería uno de los más devastadores de la historia. En la selva norte las lluvias vienen siendo muy esporádicas debido a la ola de sequías que vienen afectando esa zona durante los últimos ocho años. Y llegamos a Lima, la temperatura sobrepasa los 30 grados Celsius con un índice de radiación muy extremo. Algo, desgraciadamente, muy común en los últimos años.
Las temperaturas van a seguir siendo elevadas durante las próximas horas porque la masa de aire sahariana se va a mantener sobre España a lo largo de los próximos días, aunque lentamente se irá retirando. Seguiremos hablando de mucho calor, sobre todo incluso más, especialmente en las comunidades bañadas por el Mediterráneo. Allí suben las temperaturas y además se incrementará la mala visibilidad. Hoy hemos tenido avisos activados de nivel rojo por temperaturas máximas superiores a los 44 grados en gran parte del centro del país. Mañana se repiten estos avisos porque las temperaturas, como decíamos, se mantienen o incluso suben. Hacemos un repaso de las temperaturas durante las últimas horas. En el Valle del Guadalquivir, en Córdoba, han llegado a rozar los 50 grados, más de 45 en gran parte del interior peninsular, con temperaturas que también superan los 35 grados en el Mediterráneo. Allí la sensación de bochorno es muy significativa. Thưa quý vị và các bạn, Nam Bộ đang trải qua một đợt ngập lụt chưa từng có trong lịch sử. Diện cũng như mức độ ngập đều vượt quá sức tưởng tượng của giới khoa học cũng như là người dân. Lũ đang dâng cao thì khu vực này lại phải hứng chịu những trận mưa xối xả mà cơn bão cháy mùa thủy tinh chút xuống. Nơi vốn ít bão lại có bão to, nơi lũ hiền hòa lại trở thành lũ xiết, một hiện tượng chưa từng xảy ra trong suốt hàng trăm năm qua ở khu vực này. Toàn bộ vùng đồng bằng sông Cửu Long bao gồm vợ lúa lớn nhất của Việt Nam cũng như một dọc ven biển gồm những khu đô thị lớn đều bị nhấn chìm trong biển nước. Nhưng nơi ngập sâu nhất là vùng ven biển, từ Vũng Tàu trở dài xuống đến Cà Mau, bao gồm cả thành phố Hồ Chí Minh, đều bị ngập trong biển nước. Và ở đây đã xảy ra sự cộng hưởng của hàng loạt yếu tố thời tiết và hải văn đột biến. Đầu tiên là chiều cường cao tới 1m98, tức là cao tới hơn 20% so với hồi đầu thế kỷ. Và một cơn bão mạnh như bão thủy tinh đã khiến cho nước dâng cao tới 0,8m, tức là cao tới gấp 2 lần rưỡi so với cả năm 2014. Cộng với lượng mưa xối xả mà cơn bão chút xuống tới hàng trăm mm thì cả một vùng rộng lớn đã bị ngập sâu. Từ ven bờ trở vào đến sâu trong đất liền 30 km đều bị ngập tới 1 mét rưỡi. kraftig stormsenter på vei. Det ligger nå rätt utanför kusten vår som vi ser på detta satellitbilde och det vill närma sig i löp av någon timme. Dette har fått navnet Stig. Det er det tiende ekstremværet hittil i år. Det kommer til å gi vestlig sterk storm med orkan langs kysten. Vindkast helt opp i 60 meter i sekundet. Og det er Vestlandet som blir hardest rammet, men også Midt-Norge kan vente seg kraftig uvær. Vi får nedbør helt opp i 200 mm på et døgn. Det vil øke skredfaren betydelig i fjellet, også jordskredfare i lavlandet. Dette blir et heftig uvær, så hold deg inne dersom kommunen ikke allerede har bedt deg om å evakuere. Vestavær gir mye fint vær, Østafjells opp mot 15 grader. Her kan du handle julegaver i t-skjorte og kanskje klippe plenen til jul. I Nordland der vedvarer gress- og lyngbrannfaren en dag til. I Troms og Finnmark regnbygger under 800 meter. Det vil smelte en del snø, gi glatte veier og også økende skredfare. Chers téléspectateurs, bonsoir. Nous sommes le lundi 14 février 2050. Ça y est, le cyclone tropical très intense Gérald Abbé a atterri à Madagascar vers 20h du soir dans la ville d'Antala. Eh bien, en tant que cyclone tropical très intense, il amène avec lui des rafales de vent de plus de 300 km par heure et aussi des pluies vraiment très violentes, si bien qu'en seulement 30 minutes, il a déjà fait des ravages dans cette partie de l'île. Il sortira au niveau de Maitran et ensuite il va puiser de l'énergie dans le canal de Mozambique. Il va atterrir de nouveau dans la région d'Atsimonjefan. Il va aussi continuer sa route et sortir définitivement de Madagascar le 17 février au sud de Farafangan. Nous vous lançons alors les alertes suivantes. Alerte rouge ou avis de danger imminent pour les régions de Diana, Sava, Analanzrof. Atsnanan, Alochamangur et Sofia. Así viene este martes 27 de diciembre del 2050. Lluvia intensa y tormentas eléctricas en el interior. Ojo con las inundaciones y la posibilidad de aluviones en las alturas. Cae agua en Chayica y Tocopilla, cubierto sobre el Tofagasta. Algunas nubes sobre Atacama y el borde mar de Coquimbo. Calor intenso hacia los valles. 38 grados para Vicuña, uno menos en Copiapó. No lo olvide. El agua se distribuye de 10 a 13 y de 17 a 20 horas. Cielo abierto en el tramo, 
hasta 27 grados en la costa, 44 en San Felipe, sigue la alerta roja por incendios forestales, recuerde que entre la medianoche y las 6 de la mañana no hay suministro de electricidad. Esta ola de calor continúa dejando su huella sobre O'Higgins y también el Maule. Rancagua y Santa Cruz comparten 39 grados de máxima, 38 en Curicó, Talca y Cauquenes. No olvide el racionamiento eléctrico. El Bio, Bio también recibe esta ola de calor. 40 grados en Los Ángeles, un poco más en Bulne. El núcleo frío que afecta a la Araucanía amenaza con lluvias intensas y condiciones favorables para el desarrollo de trombas en el interior. For the forecast for now up to tomorrow, we expect the atmosphere to experience dense, dusty atmosphere all over the country. And as such, visibilities will be very poor. It's going to reduce drastically over the northern sector. It will range between 50 and 100 meters. The middle sector is going to range between 80 and 120 meters. Along the coastal strip, it's going to range between 300 and 800 meters. As we can see, the visibilities are very poor. And in view of this, the civil aviation has closed down all airports to the traveling public. And also, Ghana Private Road Transport Union has also advised its members to do so with caution. And a speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour has been given over Greater Accra. 10 kilometers per hour has been given over the middle sector. And for the northern sector, no road transportation is expected over that area. Visibilities are still very poor and it's going to stay with us for a couple of days. Come abbiamo visto dal nostro sistema di calcolo, la giornata più significativa dei prossimi sette giorni sarà martedì prossimo, con tempo perturbato principalmente al sud. Le regioni coinvolte sono la Sicilia e la Calabria, previsti venti molto forti, con raffiche anche oltre i 120 km h associati a temporali localmente molto intensi e precipitazioni abbondanti che si attestano intorno agli 800.000 mm in 24 ore, quantità elevate. Già dalla tarda mattinata, in modo più attenuato, i fenomeni interesseranno velocemente anche la campagna meridionale, la Basilicata e successivamente nel pomeriggio la Puglia. Sottolineo che non è una condizione meteorologica straordinaria. Che cosa mi dici, Leonardo? I tuoi archivi che cosa mostrano? Sì, Stefania. C'è un contrasto tra il tempo che stai descrivendo e ciò che abbiamo registrato negli ultimi mesi. Dai miei archivi risulta che le piogge intense in arrivo interrompono una prolungata fase estiva caratterizzata da alcuni brevi episodi di pioggia di scarsa entità e durata. Le regioni che hai citato hanno sofferto di questa siccità. Martedì, in poche ore, arriverà la quantità di acqua che non si è registrata in questi mesi. The dry conditions continue to persist and looking at the rainfall chart we can see that no rainfall has been recorded for the past 24 hours and it has been now two months since we last had significant rains and the Lagok Dam which is the biggest on the island is at, is at its lowest capacity at 10%. This situation is expected to continue to persist as we are still under the influence of a ridge from the Mascaren anticyclone. So for tonight we're expecting the weather to be fine Temperature 23 to 25 degrees Celsius, winds south to southeasterly, 15 to 30 kilometers per hour, and the sea will be slight. The satellite imagery you are seeing is an animation of rainstorms which have been affecting the country in the past one week, resulting to flooding and Submarging of lands, submarging of vehicles, submarging of farmlands, as we can see, people displaced from their homes and a general effect on livelihoods. Today again, we are expecting a repeat of such a widespread activity as conditions in the atmosphere suggest so. We see moisture influx from the Atlantic Ocean into the country increasing, and we see increasing relative humidity values in red coloration as shown at levels of 1,500 meters above the ground. Miren, temperaturas que se elevarían en todo el área del Caribe. Habría zonas de sequía con muy poca lluvia y otras zonas de mucha lluvia porque se aproxima un huracán. Y ese huracán hipotético, huracán Filomena, está a punto de llegar. 
con categoría 5 a la isla de Antigua la Buda en las próximas 48 horas. Y fíjense que los vientos que tiene son de 255 kilómetros por hora con rachas hasta 300 o más. Por lo tanto, eso hace pensar en que tenemos que tener presente siempre el cambio climático. Hasta la próxima.